Now, for those of you that watch the channel regularly, you will remember this system. This is something that, that we built recently from an old workstation. It is a HP Z240, a sixth generation Intel system that probably spent its life under a desk in an office and we converted it into a gaming PC. And the complete system cost for this was only around £150. But during that video, we did identify a few issues. The main one being that there's very little cooling inside these cases. We're going to actually resolve that by giving it a fresh new look increasing that cooling but it's not going to come without issues being a semi-proprietary system there's going to be a few little issues as we go along and in today's video we want to actually go through those and show you how we resolve them okay so the first thing that we needed to do was obviously tear down the system and that's what we've done we've got all the parts on the desk now if we start with the motherboard you'll be able to see a little bit more detail than we did on the last video it is a pretty standard motherboard it is an atx format we've got four dim slots We've got two full length PCIe slots. There are some proprietary pieces with this though that we'll go through now. The first one was of course the fan. Now in the HP Z240 standard case, the mounting points for the fan are actually in the case itself. So of course we can't take that along because there's no way of actually mounting it to the CPU. So instead, we decided to swap it out for another very basic cooler, but this is one from Arctic. You could pretty much get away with any cooler that you want on here because the mounting actual format is pretty standard for Intel. So you can get away with a nice tower cooler, an AIO, pretty much anything. But we opted for this because it's pretty cheap, they're reasonably quiet, and it will do the job that we need it to do. Now, when it comes to the power connections on this motherboard, you can see that they are actually proprietary. There's no 24 pin on here, although we do have a four pin EPS, so that's pretty standard but we will need something specific for these. And that's one reason why we've had to actually completely take the power supply as well. The power supply only has a few cables in it. There are no SATAs, there are no uh, Molex connections because they are actually separate and they connect to the motherboard itself in the secondary slot. The power supply itself will connect into the white slot on the motherboard and there's also a smaller kind of white slot there. That is a completely proprietary connection. And then of course your EPS connection here. Now if you remember in the last video we also said that this was a reasonably decent system because we also have a six pin connection for a graphics card. So we're going to be bringing the power supply along with us into a new case. It is a pretty standard shaped and sized ATX power supply. It is a 400 watt platinum rated so it's not bad at all. It's not the greatest looking at all and obviously the cables are in funny colors but that's actually not going to affect the performance so we're going to be fine taking that along. Now of course for the graphics card we have the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte. This was the card that we actually upgraded the system to in the last video. That is going to come along too and should fit perfectly fine. And then of course we have an issue with the M.2 drive that we used before. Now the M.2 drives on these actually mounted across and outside of the motherboard. They actually kind of mounted down to the case. Now in the new case, we're not gonna have that kind of mechanism. So instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap it out for a standard SATA drive. Now there are ways of actually getting this to work. You could actually put some extra standoffs in your case, just drill a hole, thread in a standoff and mount your M.2 or NVMe drive. But we decided not to bother doing that because we're just going to keep things simple but you can do that and i'm pretty sure actually the case that we're going to be putting this into won't really support it anyway so that's what we're going to do about storage now everything that you've seen so far will actually now go straight into a case but we're going to find other issues and that is when it comes to some of the connections on the motherboard for your hd audio at the front here everything's going to be fine that is pretty standard so any case's hd audio connection is going to work then we've got the USB 2. Now, unfortunately, this won't work when you hook it up to another system. And that is because they've actually done some kind of wiring configuration there to kind of make it a little bit proprietary. And that is the same for the USB 3. But there are ways of fixing that. We have done some research and we found the pinouts for both and we've kind of worked out what we need to do. A lot of guides out there will actually show you how to splice the wiring inside your new case to actually work across this. Because all you need to do is actually just jump a couple of the wires. But we don't like to do things that simple. We've actually gone a little bit more extreme. And that's because it's technically a problem with the board. What I don't want to do is butcher a brand new case just to get this to work, particularly if we want to then swap it out into another case later on. So I've decided to fix it on the board. And to do that, what I've done is I've actually soldered two little pieces onto the board that bridge the exact points that we need for them. 
This has now been tested on our test bench and it works perfectly fine. So that's going to resolve that problem for you. If you want to know more information about that, make sure you jump into our Discord server and I can share any of the diagrams that I used. There is a link in the description below. So now that we've taken a look at the components that we are taking along to the new case, it's time to have a look at what we got. And for that, we picked up this. This is a very budget, cheap case that we picked up. And the reason that we did that is because we didn't want to spend a lot on this. It was a budget gaming PC to begin with, but also it comes with a completely black side. There are no windows on this. We're not going fancy, no RGB. It's going to be a completely stealth system. The case is from a company called AVP and cost around £30. I probably wouldn't pay that again for it. It's not the greatest quality of cases, but it's going to give us everything that we need for this. But of course, we also need to improve the cooling. So for that, we've picked up some new fans. Now, the fans that we decided to pick up with these from Thermoride. So they're not RGB fans, they're just plain black ones, but they have a unique feature that we really needed for this build. We have taken a look at Thermoride fans in the past and they've not actually been that bad. So I thought we would get these over any other brand because of a couple of unique features. For one, they are hybrid fans, so they work great as case fans or as something if you want to go on a radiator and that's going to be quite important for this build because obviously we don't have a front mesh panel we've only got these mesh sides on the case so it needs to be able to draw air through that quite quickly so these are going to be perfect for that the second reason is for this now these fans do come with what uh, I know Arctic call them a PST connection but basically it's a pigtail to the PWM now that's really important for us because the motherboard doesn't have that many PWM connections we simply have one for the CPU cooler which is just back there and then we have one right on the back there that is actually for a chassis fan so we're going to have to be able to link these fans together otherwise we'll have to buy a new hub and some kind of controller and we don't want to do that we want to actually limit as much as we can so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running three of these fans in the front of the case all pigtailed together to one in the back which will then plug onto the motherboard. That should increase the cooling in this system by quite a bit, considering the previous case didn't have anything. It should make it look a little bit better, but also provide enough space for future upgrades. So I suppose the only thing that we need to do now really is actually get it into the case, and then we'll see what kind of issues we have as we go along. So we now have the front fans installed, everything went in perfectly fine and we've drawn the wires through the side here. Unfortunately, even with pigtails, we're gonna have a lot to cable manage later, but one of the things that this case did come with was its own rear fan here. Now that fan is a little bit crap to be honest, it's not a great quality fan, there is no little rubber mounts in the corners, it's obviously not going to pigtail to the rest of the system, so we're going to be changing it anyway, but that will give you a spare fan for something else, I'm not sure what you could actually use that for. And as you can see from inside of here, because we've got this extra beam or bar inside the case, the fans only just fit. So even though this case is actually advertised as one that you can actually fit a 360 millimeter radiator in the front, in actual fact, trying to fit fans on is going to be near impossible unless you move that bracket there, but then you're going to have a big hole into the back of the system. So this is one of the reasons why I said I wouldn't repurchase this case again. It doesn't really make sense. It's great for a super cheap thing where you don't want any kind of window or RGB and you want just a basic system in it, which is exactly what we're doing. But for anybody that wants something a little bit more premium, there are much better brands out there. And you can actually, for the same price as this one, get one with a nice window and stuff. The one thing it does have that I like and is gonna be great for us for future upgrading is of course the top. In the top, we do have a nice kind of dust filter there and a great big space for anything like fans and radiators there. So we can always improve the cooling here by adding extra on. And maybe we'll do that in the future. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll continue to fit the system in. The next bit that we're gonna be putting in is the motherboard. And then we'll see what kind of issues we get with that, as well as obviously installing the power supply too. Okay, so we've pretty much got everything installed now, the hard drive, motherboard, the power supply. The last thing to put in is of course the graphics card, but we've run into a little bit of an issue. Because this power supply is a proprietary one and it was built into a case that was custom made and sized for these kind of components, we've got an issue with the length of wiring. Now, if we take a look at this one, this is the four pin EPS connection for our CPU. No matter what we do, it's actually not long enough to get up there to the motherboard and over the other side and down to the connection. Now, that is an easy fix because it is a standard connection. And quite luckily, we have one of these on hand. This is a four pin EPS connection extension. So we can simply just get this installed and it will actually be then long enough to get over the top. It's very easy to install. All we need to do is just extend it by clicking that one into there and then run it through the hole 
and then of course plug it in when we're on the other side. The one that is a little bit more awkward though is the normal one which um, in normal cases would be the 24 pin but for this one we have this weird proprietary system here with this white connection and a six pin that actually isn't long enough to go up here round the side and to the motherboard and unfortunately we can't actually extend this one because it's a proprietary connection there's no other way of doing it so what we're gonna have to do for this one is actually try to run it up through the front now running the connection up through the front here underneath the case itself we can just about get enough length on the cable to get it plugged in this is a little bit tight but it is just enough and unfortunately if you've got a windowed case you are going to be able to see it but for us we're not going to be able to see it because of course we have uh, no window on our case but that cable just about goes in there could do with actually a little bit more adjustment but apart from that we've actually got that cable in it's slightly tight but apart from that you're not really going to be able to see it of course we need the EPS connection as well and that's just going to go through the back and flip over to the front now everything is installed into the system and it's gone perfectly fine the motherboard is in apart from the little length of the cables that we've had to run up the front it's still pretty tidy if you remember the previous system it was a bit of a rat's nest when it came to cables there was a certain cable management inside the previous case but it was wasn't used and it was just pretty much everywhere of course we don't have the ODD slots anymore, so we've got plenty more space for air to flow. And keeping these cables nice and tidy actually increases that and helps it out. But of course, we now have a rat's nest in the back. Along with the rat's nest in the back of this case, of course, we also didn't have any kind of IO shield with this. Now, it's not necessary to have an IO shield. We've actually left it out. We could have 3D printed a new one, but we want to actually do this so it represented more about what other people could do and not everybody has a 3D printer. So that's exactly how the system's going to look. You could potentially try to cut the old one out of the system because it's actually integrated into the steel. But for us, we're going to leave that. And now it's time to just do some cable management. When it comes to cable management, I don't really use cable ties anymore. And that's because I put these systems together, I take them apart. It's not good for the environment to keep having to cut them off. So instead, I actually use these. Now these are little Velcro straps that you can use to actually pin up everything inside your case. You can pin it to the standard normal places. You can tuck cables together. And then, of course, you can always remove them and use them again. In fact, these have been reused many, many times before. So let's put this system down. Let's get some cable management done. We'll get the front back on. We'll get the back back on. And we'll take a look at what the system looks like now that it's got all of its improvements. And there we have it, we have a completely recased HP Z240. It doesn't actually look that bad. I think you could get away with a system here with a window. You will have to ignore some of the colors of the cables, but we can always get a six pin extension and we can get a nice braided one. We can always get a four pin braided extension and we needed the extension anyway, so they would look quite nice. You would have to do something with these cables here, but being that it is a sixth generation system, we can get RGB DDR4 RAM, so that would look quite nice in here. We could get a nicer cooler, a nicer graphics card. We could get a totally nicer case, to be honest. But for our needs, this is going to be perfect. It's going to get provide all the airflow that we need for this system, as well as being a super cheap upgrade. Of course, you've still got the silver power supply sitting here at the bottom, but we could fix that quite easily with a little bit of vinyl wrap. We could vinyl wrap that off and nobody would even tell. But for us, we're not going to be able to tell anyway, because of course, the side of our case is not even clear. So once that's on, we're not even gonna be able to tell what is actually in there. Let me know in the comments below, where do you think I should take this little system next? I'm gonna keep it around for a bit to be a bit of a project PC here in the studio. So anything you want us to do to it, let us know down there and we'll, you know, we'll use it as a bit of a project and we'll do that kind of stuff. 
we can butcher the case, we can modify it. Do you want to see it in an actual different case, something with RGB and all that kind of stuff? How good could we get this stuff actually looking for a budget, of course? The case, the fans and the cooler in this cost around £50. So the total build cost so far is, of course, £200. But if we were to put it in another case with another fans, we'd minus off the price of these and we'd go with whatever we put on there. We could also upgrade this system. We could drop in another graphics card. We could drop in another CPU. There's not much that we can go on this motherboard, but we could go up to an i7. It's currently running an i5-6500, which works perfectly fine with a GTX 1060. But of course, if we upgrade that, there's a little bit more work to do because we'll need to upgrade the power supply too. And that is possible. So let me know down there if you want us to do that to show you how to do it. But don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and you want to see where we take this little system next or any other systems that we're playing around with. And I'm sure like always, we'll catch you in the next one.